everyone, welcome back to another episode of Focus Point Facebook Live. So my name is Vivian, I'm an optometrist by profession. So today, um, as you can see, we are doing in a very different background. So no, this is not my office tour, but welcome to part of my office. Okay, so today I'm very happy because I um, actually got a lot of uh, good questions from um, the live audience from the past few sessions. And due to this uh, popular demand, I'm actually doing another session on Ask the Optometrist. So don't forget to help me to like and share this uh, Focus Point Facebook Live post. And if you have any questions for me, you know what to do. Leave your questions in the comment section below and I will try my best to answer. So today we will have uh, questions that are pre-collected and also coming in from the live audience. So don't forget, remember again, help me like and share, tag as many friends as you can and stay tuned because I'll be doing a giveaway later. Hi Kaushilya, hi Josephine, hi Veronica, hi Natsi, thank you very much for your continuous support. It's really good, you know, to see familiar names. Okay, so um, today, like I mentioned, um, it's going to be more of like, you know, ask the optometrist but we have a topic that you know I want to discuss more in details. It's actually about contact lens. So a lot of people are asking about um, how to get my contact lenses, especially if my area is under uh, CMCO. I don't want to go out to the shopping malls. I don't feel comfortable going to the shops. What can I do to get my contact lens replenishment? What happens if I have any contact lens related question or inquiry? How can I get help? So today's session is specially catered for this. The very first question that I actually want to address is actually on um, something that a lot of people ask about. It's about contact lens and dryness. Okay. So we know that for our natural eyes without the presence of contact lens, we have a layer of tears that's covering the outer surface of our eyes. And as we are blinking, so when we are blinking, right, these tears will get distributed evenly across our eye surface. So it helps to keep our eyes moist, healthy, and for us to see good vision. However, if you're putting a contact lens onto your eye, what happens is it could disrupt this tear layer in a way. So it will divide this tear layer into a pre and post contact lens layer. So there will be two layers. And what happens is the balances between the oil, uh, the water component and also the mucus component of your tears can be a little bit off balance which is why for some contact lens users they may experience some dryness during contact lens wear. So however you don't have to worry because in recent years there have been a lot of new technology and innovations in the contact lens design and also the material. So most of the contact lens are able to minimize this lens drying issue. What is very important here is you understand the product that you are wearing and also does it suit your lifestyle. So if you are not sure, the very first thing that you must do is make an appointment to see your eye care practitioners. See your optometrist, see your ophthalmologist for a consultation before getting started on contact lenses. If you are somebody who is wearing your contact lenses for uh, a long day, let's say for example you're a very busy person, normally if you're wearing your contact lenses for more than 8 hours a day, your eye care practitioner may recommend a silicone hydrogel contact lens that it's more suitable for uh, long hours of wearing. And if you are wearing, uh, let's say for example, like uh, soft hydrogel contact lenses, water content of the contact lenses also will make a difference. So a lot of people will think that um, if I want to prevent dryness when I'm wearing contact lenses, I should go for something that's higher in water content. Actually, it's the opposite. If you are having uh, dry eyes from uh, contact lens wear, it is actually better if you go for something that is a bit lower in water content when you are selecting contact lenses. You can also use some contact lens solutions that contain rewetting agents to help to keep your contact lens moist. And don't forget, if you are experiencing any dryness during contact lens wear, it is perfectly safe for you to wear, uh, to use lubricating eye drops. Just make sure that these eye drops are indicated for contact lens use. Okay, so that is the first question. Okay, and the second one, it's actually very related to our current lifestyle and it's very much linked to the first question. 
So the question is actually uh, contact lens and digital eye strain. So digital eye strain can happen for a few reasons. Okay, it can be because of overexposure or overextended time that you spend in front of a digital device. It can also be, let's say, your posture. So uh, for example, neck pain, muscle ache, uh, as a result of bad posture, could also contribute to a factor in digital eye strain. So there are a lot of contact lens users who may report, I have, um, for example, extra dryness, or I feel my eyes are more strained when I'm using contact lenses instead of wearing glasses in front of my computer. So why is this um, and what can I do about it? So the actual reason behind this is you may be blinking lesser when you're using a digital device. So let's say for example, now I have, um, this is my iPad, I have my iPad in front. Okay, let's say if I am using my iPad, I may tend to blink lesser. So when I'm blinking lesser, right, um, the tear layer is actually not lubricating the outer surface of my eyes that well. So that is number one. And when you are doing, uh, focusing on near work for too long, you may actually experience some sort of eye fatigue. Your location of work desk is also very important. So if you have an aircon or if you have a fan that's directly blowing air into your eyes, this can also contribute to evaporation of your tears and contribute to more dryness. Some people also ask, let's say if I'm already wearing contact lens, um, I'm a, I work in an office, I deal with a lot of digital devices, how can I protect my eyes from blue light? If you are looking for blue light protection while wearing contact lenses, these are some of the things that you can do. Some of our customers or patients, they choose to wear non-powered glasses, which means um, they have contact lenses on, they will put on another pair of glasses which has no power but has a anti-blue light coating. So what it can do is it can help to prevent and also to protect your eyes against a blue light damage. So if you are thinking about protecting your eyes from blue light, do talk to your optometrist or your optician about this option. And there are also some people who ask me, Vivian, um, um, I'm in my late 30s or early 40s. I'm having a little bit of difficulty reading at near. Okay, so this is a sign of press biopia, or in Mandarin we call it Lao Hua. So this is a very natural aging process. Okay, so everybody will may have to go through it at some point of their life. So what happens is if you have press biopia and you are a contact lens wearer, there are a few things that you can do. Number one, you can either go for contact lenses that is called multifocal contact lens, which means it will come in with your reading power needed built in. Or you can wear contact lenses that correct your vision for seeing far. And when you are doing near work, just put on another pair of reading glasses. So this reading glasses is slightly different from the non-powered blue light glasses that we mentioned just now. This pair will come with additional magnifying power that will help you to read at near and for you to do your near work in front of your computer. So these are some of the options you can consider. Do remember you have to practice the 20-20-20 rule which means for every 20 minutes that you spend in front of a digital device, you need to take a visual break, give your eyes a break, look at something that is 20 feet or about 6 meters away for 20 seconds. So let's say for example, if you have a window in your office or at home, what you can do is just look out the window and look far. This will help to relax your eyes. You can also do a a lubricating or re-wetting of your eyes by using eye drops. You can also use artificial tears. Just remember that if you are wearing contact lens in your eyes, make sure the eye drops you use are indicated for contact lens wear. And there is one additional tip that I would like to share. You know, sometimes you can get a humidifier. So it is those small devices that can emit like uh, water in the form of mist. Okay. So when you have this in your office or in your room, it can help to make the environment slightly uh, higher in water content. So that could be helpful in also preventing some of the digital eye strain or dryness that's associated with long-term digital device usage.
Let me just see. I think I have a question here. Okay. Cannot wear contact lens if our eyes are too dry. Okay, it really depends. So there are many reasons that your eyes could be dry. If without contact lens, you already have dryness going on, it is best that you seek a professional advice. Go to your optometrist or your ophthalmologist where they can check your eyes. Uh, it is best to get the underlying cause treated before considering contact lenses. Okay, there's another question. I think this is from uh, Kavshila. Can we wear contact lenses from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m.? Yes, you can. So um, there are many innovations in the market right now and there are materials that are designed or products that are designed for long hours of wearing. So even if you are wearing um, beyond 6 p.m., it is good. So um, this material are called silicon hydrogel. So you can visit your eye care practitioner you know, to get more info on what are the products suitable. Because when we are talking about products compatibility, we need to take into consideration many different factors. The curvature of your eyes, uh, the size of your eyes, and also the curvature of the contact lens. We must make sure other than the power, the fitting of the contact lens is also done well. The next question that I've collected is, can I share contact lens? So, for all of you who are watching right now, okay, this is the very first giveaway. Okay, so, I'm going to repeat again, huh? this is the very first giveaway. So, please remember, help us to like and share this Facebook post. Answer my question and tag three friends together with your answer in the comment section below. Do you think you can share contact lens? It's very simple. Just reply yes or no and tag three friends. Okay, so while waiting for your answers to come in, I will address the rest of the question first. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk to you about is actually something that is very relevant, choosing color contact lenses. So um, a lot of times people always ask, um, can I wear color contact lenses if I have no power? For color cosmetic lenses, you can wear even if you do not have any uh, prescription needed. Okay, the lenses will actually come in power or non-powered option. So there is actually a term that we use for non-powered, we call it plano. Okay, so you can actually talk to your eye care practitioner as well if you are unsure. So when we are talking about color contact lenses, right? Most color contact lenses, if you look at the design, it is designed in a way that it's supposed to look like the natural look of our eyes. So in our eyes, there is a colored portion that is called the iris that give our eye color. So this is also why some of us can be a dark eye, a dark brown, black, blue or green. So the iris give your eyes the color. So what this color contact lens does is, there are a lot of colourful shape, lines and dots that is actually looks like it's printed onto the contact lens. And it's in the shape and the form of our iris. So when you wear it over your eye, right, it gives you the appearance of colour. So there is normally a clear section in the middle of this colour contact lens and that is where the light will pass through the contact lens, pass through our pupil, the anak mater, and reach into the eye. So when you are choosing color contact lens, it's not enough to just know your power and the color that you want. It is very important that you go in, get your eyes fitted. So why do I say so? Remember just now I told you about this color design. So imagine if you have a, a loose fitting contact lens. A loose fitting which means that contact lens are supposed to move when you blink. So when you're blinking, it is normal for the contact lens to move. But with a loose fitting contact lens, there will be a lot of movement. And when you have a lot of movement in a color contact lens, the color portion may come into the center of sight, which means that the area that is supposed to be clear now is off center. So when your eyes see this color printed part of the color contact lens, it will recognize it as blurring. So which is why for some badly fitted color contact lens, your vision may not be very stable. If you blink, sometimes it becomes blur. It's because of this color printed portion. 
And another thing that you should take into consideration and another good solid reason for you to seek a professional consultation before purchasing color contact lens is your pupil size. So pupil size or the size anak mata is very important. If you have a larger pupil size, so at night or in dim condition, this pupil size will become even bigger. So you just imagine if you have chosen a color contact lens product that has a very narrow, clear uh, area in the middle. So when your anak mata enlarge at night or in dim condition, you could be seeing some of the color printed portion also. So this is why, you know, for some customers, they will come back and tell us that, hey, Vivian, I don't know why in the daytime, my vision is fine with this color contact lens, but at night, it's not so good. Okay, this could be one of the reasons that contribute to this scenario from happening. And when you are choosing color contact lens, please make sure that you are choosing from a reputable and trusted brand because um, this color pigment uh, is normally a layer that is sandwiched in between. So it's normally sandwiched and this color pigment should not leak out. If in any cases that you see your soaking solution has any color pigment or if you feel any discomfort, you should stop the use immediately and seek advice from your eye care practitioners. Hmm, let me just quickly check the comment section. Do we have... Let me just check. Huh? Okay, let me see. Okay, so I can still see that, you know, you are replying to the uh, question that I asked. So thank you very much for your participation. I'm going to allow a little bit more time for you to participate in this giveaway. So remember what you need to do. Like, share this post and tag three friends together with your answer. Can you share contact lens? Okay, the answer is either yes or no. So make sure you answer and tag three friends. Okay, I can see a lot, a lot of responses. Thank you so much. If you want to win, make sure you do it. And I will review what is the price for the giveaway in a short while. Must keep the suspense, you know. Okay, another question that maybe for parents or for teenagers they are very concerned to know how early can i start contact lens wear so um for myself i've prescribed to children as young as eight years old that is the youngest patient that i've prescribed with uh, contact lenses so as young as school kids age uh, okay but you will need to seek a professional consultation so there are many options in the market that it's suitable for kids or kids can try to wear. So most of it, uh, most of the time, the reason why uh, parents want to start their children at a younger age on contact lens could be because of myopia management. So there is actually this uh, product in the market that's called orthokeratology or ortho -K. It's actually a more rigid contact lenses. It's of a harder uh, it's different from the soft contact lens, it's a hard lens that can actually help to manage your myopia progression. And there are also some soft contact lens, daily disposable contact lens available in the market that also works to control or to manage the myopia from progressing further. So these are maybe some of the reasons why parents are considering starting their young children on contact lenses. So when you ask me, right, um, can can you can you or can you not feed my child or my teenager with the contact lenses? Personally, this is what I will do. I will always uh, schedule for a consultation with the child and or the teenager together with the parent because it's very important for us to check the power, okay, check the fitting, recommend the right product that is suitable. So let's say for example, um, I personally, I like to understand more on the grooming and hygiene habit of the child or the teenager first. So if he or she is capable of maintaining good grooming habits, very clean, chances are they are more likely to be able to learn and accept new responsibilities like uh, inserting contact lens in the right way, cleaning and storing contact lens and even how to remove in the right manner that is taught to them. And it also helps when um, the kids understand the motivation of wearing contact lens. 
So sometimes when the parents want to start the children on contact lens, but the children has no idea of the motivation, he or she may not comply so well. So it's very important to understand this motivation. So example, just now I mentioned, the youngest child that I've prescribed with contact lens is eight years old. So when I was still in uh, practicing in the outlet, so one day one of my regular customer came to see me and her child is eight years old at that time. So she's very active in gymnastics and she wants to pursue gymnastics as a professional career when she grows up. So unfortunately, she has a very high myopia. If I remember correctly, it was more than minus six at the age of uh, eight. So doing gymnastics with glasses was very troublesome. And you just imagine if you remove your glasses, you hardly can see anything. So um, safety wise, it is also not recommended. So I actually scheduled an appointment with her daughter together with um, the mother and I sat down with them and went through all this with them. Like, do you know why you want to wear contact lenses? Um, what is your new responsibility if you decide to wear? So once you explain the motivation level to the child or to the teenager, he or she could be more compliant and make this contact lens fitting and wear more successful. So I think parent supervision and also help is very, very important in the beginning. So it could be about insertion, it could be reminding them or supervising in their care, how they wash the contact lens, how they uh, soak the contact lens, or even how often they replace the contact lens. If daily, make sure you dispose after one day. If reusable, make sure you are cleaning and storing in the right way. And I just want to bring up a very important point uh, about this question. Contact lens wear is not a permanent decision. Okay, so let's say if you are thinking about starting your child on contact lenses or if your teenager voluntarily asks to be fitted with contact lenses and after wearing, right, he or she finds that they are not adapting well or maybe not up to the responsibility of carrying and wearing these contact lenses, we can always discontinue this contact lens wear and the child or the teenager can always come back and um, start wearing contact lens at a later stage. So this does not mean that it's a permanent, okay? You can always make changes. So this is also why regular follow-ups with contact lens user is very important, especially when you are dealing with kids or teenagers. Let me quickly check. Okay, I think I have another question here from the live audience. The difference between good and fake contact lenses. Hmm, this is actually a very uh, tough question to answer. Okay, let me think, how should I phrase it? Um, when we say good and fake in the same sentence, right? Hmm, when we are talking about, uh, I would prefer to put it this way. Instead of good, bad or fake contact lens, right? When you are purchasing contact lens, it's very important. I would like to stress again, get your eye care practitioner opinion. So he or she must have a personalized consultation with you. So make sure that the brand that you are purchasing, uh, it's of a trusted brand, a reputable brand. Try not to buy from unauthorized sellers. Okay, so unauthorized sellers sometimes um, it could be via different methods. So if your seller is not able to provide you aftercare service, okay, you can opt for providers who can. So for example, if you purchase from Focus Point, right, we always recommend that you come back for your contact lens aftercare and follow up because we want to make sure that your eyes are being taken care of and the product that we um, suggested or recommended to you is the right one. Okay, and if you are worried about um, getting fake contact lens, okay, what I would suggest is again, buy from a reputable seller. So if you are wondering at this point of time, because I understand a lot of you, you may be thinking about purchasing or replenishing your contact lens supply via online uh, doorstep delivery because for Malaysians right now, we are all recommended to stay at home minimize our things. So it may not be very easy for you to go out and buy and replenish your contact lens. But there are a few things that you can do. And I will actually address this and combine with another question also. Okay. 
So when is it okay to um, buy contact lens, let's say for example, online? So if you are thinking about that, for a first time contact lens wearer, you are not supposed to buy online. Okay, you will need to go and check your eyes first. We will check for your prescription. We will check for your fitting. We will recommend the right product according to your lifestyle requirements. And the contact lens fit should be optimal because you want to minimize any complications with contact lens. However, if you are an experienced contact lens user, you have a valid contact lens prescription. You do not have any issue in your vision or eyes. You can replenish your lenses online, but you still must make an appointment with us to have your annual eye examination. For Focus Point, we do provide some e-commerce uh, services. So you can actually visit you know, our Focus Point website and get your contact lenses. As an alternative, because I understand sometimes uh, you may not have your prescription on hand, you may be unsure. What you can do is you can actually get in contact with any of our uh, um, frontliners, okay, our optometrists will be very happy to help you. So you can contact your nearest or any Focus Point outlet. And if you are a existing customer in Focus Point, we can always check your purchase record and we'll be able to advise you accordingly. So during um, this CMCO period for Focus Point, we do provide teleoptometry services, which means if you have any concern, we can provide consultation to you via the phone or via a video call if you don't feel comfortable about leaving your house and going to uh, crowded places. So that can be arranged with our outlets and our outlet can also take your orders and make it a doorstep delivery for you. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a very short video of how easy it is to actually order contact lenses from Focus Point uh, online store. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll be checking the comment sections for your answers to the giveaway. Welcome back and I hope you enjoyed that video. So I hope you also see how easy it is to order your replenishment of contact lens online. Okay, so I'll be covering a little bit more on what are the things that is needed for you to actually purchase your contact lens online. But before that, let me just quickly announce the winner for the giveaway. So for the giveaway, this is the prize that we are giving out. So this is a Xiaomi power bank. It's also something that I use and I love. So I hope that the winner will enjoy this as well. So the winner for the giveaway is actually Josephine Thiel. So Josephine, thank you so much. I know you have always been supporting us. You know, I see your name very frequently. So thank you so much for your continuous support. So for the winner, what you can do is, Josephine, please Facebook message us your details and we will advise you on the price redemption. So we still have chances for you to grab more of this. I have a few units to give away, so stay tuned. Okay, I will introduce the giveaway very soon. Sometimes when I look at the comment section, I really feel very happy because I can see that you know for our live audience, you guys are very supportive. You, you say congratulations to the winner. Um, and you are very much um, interacting among yourself and also with us. So this really makes me very happy and it makes me less nervous because it almost feels like I'm talking to my friends. Okay, so thank you very, very much. Okay. So just now I mentioned that, you know, um, if you want to actually um, order your contact lenses online, you will need to know, let's say for example, like your contact lens uh, prescription, uh, let's say you need to know uh, your uh, product that you are using. So let me talk to you a little bit about prescription. So this is also something that is very important. Okay, what is an eye prescription? So I know a lot of us, we are more familiar with medication prescription. 
Medication prescription is, you know, that piece of paper or that slip of paper that the doctor writes to you in order for you to get your medication from the pharmacist. For eye prescription, it's a record of measurement for your vision and the strength of vision correction that you need to see clearly. So it can be for glasses, it can also be for contact lenses. And how to get your prescription? You can actually get this from opticians, opto um, optometrists and ophthalmologists, the eye doctors, after doing an eye test. So an eye prescription will tell you whether you are long or short-sighted whether you have astigmatism, silam, and also whether you require additional power to help with reading at near. And your prescription may change, so it's very important to have your eyes checked at least once every 12 months. If you are under any medical care or management of any eye issue, you may require a higher frequency. So for example, if you are under medical treatment for um, Cataract, your doctor may actually recommend a higher frequency in terms of visits. So I am going to show you an example of how a prescription looks like. Okay, so on screen right now you should be able to see. Okay, um, let me just uh, explain a little bit first. Okay, sometimes when you go to different places, right, um, the layout of the form could be different. But essentially, there are a few key points that will remain the same. So let me just go through with you. So the prescription should indicate which eye. So if you see RE, right eye. LE, left eye. So in some cases also, you could see, for example, OD or OS. OD is an indicator for right eye, OS for left eye. And when you look at this sphere, a plus sign will indicate that you are long-sighted. A minus sign will indicate that you are short-sighted. So when you are looking at all this, right, the number will be in an incremental step of 0.25. And the unit of measurement is actually diopter. So sometimes when you see a prescription, you see a capital D, that is actually a short form for diopter. So diopter is very easy to understand. If you measure, let's say, weight, like your body weight, you measure in kg, kilo, diopter is simply a unit of measurement, how we measure the strength of the correction needed. So when you look at your sphere, your cylinder, the higher the number, the stronger the prescription lens will be required. And CYL, or cylinder, it's actually the measurement of astigmatism that needed. So this astigmatism is commonly caused by irregularly shaped cornea and in Malaysia we commonly record as a minus sign. So both sphere and cylinder are measured in diopters and this AX or what we call axis, this is the part that a lot of people get confused. The axis simply means the direction of the astigmatism and it is measured in degree. So it's starting from 0 degree um, all the way up to 180. Okay, so let's say for example, if you see um, 45 degree or a 45 under the axis column, it simply means right what angle is actually um, needed to correct this astigmatism. And as for the prism, right, um, this may be prescribed to correct your eye misalignment issue and only a very small percentage of eye prescription will actually require this. VA, this is your visual acuity. This is an indicator of how well that you can see within 6 meters. And the last part is actually um, addition. Addition, it's your added magnifying power for correcting press myopia. So let's say if you are approaching the age of 40s and you are having a reading difficulty. So this is how much additional magnifying power is needed for you to read at near. Okay, so just now we have also seen, right, um, there was a photo of the eye with like something like a protractor. So it shows the angle of the astigmatism. So do not worry if your AX shows a very high value because one of the very common questions that I get a lot is, ah, Miss Vivian, I see my AX is 180. That's very high. That means it's very bad, is it? No, that AX is just um, the direction or the angle that is measured in degrees. 
Okay, so the next photo that I want to show you is actually on computer eye test or auto refractor results. Very often when you visit any optical shops, especially, um, and you request for a computer eye test, this is what um, the computer will generate after the eye test. So this is an objective measurement, which means you don't have to give any input. So they will not ask you whether this is clear, you are not given any choices. So it's just measured objectively. And I would say this is an estimation of your prescription, but it may not be the final and accurate one. If you only have this computer eye test results, this is not enough or not sufficient for you to go for your glasses or contact lens made. You will need to actually do a manual eye test and get a valid prescription. So I hope this helps to help us understand about um, contact lenses and also um, glasses prescription. And please take note also that for glasses and contact lens prescription, sometimes um, it could be a little bit different in power. So why are they different? It's because if you look at how the lenses are being worn for glasses, there is a distance between the lens and your eye. Whereas for contact lens, it's directly on your eye. Depending on the degree of your refractive error, which means your just now that sphere, that SPH, um, your astigmatism, and the type of contact lenses that's prescribed, the values for your glasses and contact lens prescription could be different. Especially for higher myopes, if your um, short sightedness is above minus 4 and above, you will find that sometimes when you are getting Thing prescribed for contact lenses, the contact lens prescription will be slightly lower. This is actually to compensate for what we call the vertex distance, which means the distance from your eye to the back of your spectacle lenses. So you don't have to worry if you are not sure. Your eye care practitioner, your optometrist or focus point optometrist will be more than happy to help you to do this necessary compensation and calculation and recommend the right power for you. And your contact lens prescription may also include the measurement of like curvature of your eye, you know, what are the suitable products that you could wear. So if you're unsure, the best and only thing you should do is chat with your eye care practitioner. Give our focus point optometrist a call and they'll be very happy to help you. There's another question that's coming in from the live audience, contact lens for astigmatism. Okay, we have different degrees of astigmatism and myopia. Can we get the contact lens easily from the optical shop or do we need to custom make the contact lens to suit our eyes? Okay, Josephine, this is actually a very good question. So there are um, lenses in the market right now that can correct myopia and astigmatism. Okay, but um, because it comes in a different combination. So if you remember just now the prescription, so each person you may have the same sphere and same cylinder but in different axis. So there are a lot of um, ready-made, uh, I, so, I would call it really stock lenses, okay, sorry. The correct term is stock contact lenses. So we may still need uh, one to three days to get these contact lenses in, but it's actually pre-made and comes in boxes in the right combination of power. So we can actually help you to order contact lenses that correct myopia and astigmatism in accordance with the combination of power that you may have. So this type, even though this is what we call a stock contact lenses already made, okay, you may still need to wait one to three days um, after ordering for you to receive the stock because there are many different combinations. And for optical shops, we are not able to keep stock for every single combination which is why we will still need to order from the supplier and get it delivered. There is also option to custom make um, the contact lenses, but that is um, not so popular option nowadays. A lot of people, they will go for all these, uh, what we call uh, ready stock contact lenses. Mm, Napsi is asking, um, can contact lens slow or control nearsightedness? Okay, there are types of contact lens, there are products in the market that can actually work to control the myopia progression. One of it is auto -K. another type is, um, let's say for example for Cooper Vision, they have this product that is called MySight, 
My site is a daily disposable soft content lens that is designed to help with the myopia management. So there are options available that you know you can find out more. And Jasmine asked, um, how old can a kid wear contact lenses? So Jasmine, um, for kids to wear contact lenses, right, um, as young as school age, so let's say seven or eight onwards, it is okay, but please remember that you have to come in for a professional consultation. Let the eye care practitioner find out what is the right product and we will also need to advise and check that you know your child is actually able to accept this new responsibility of wearing, carrying and removing contact lens in the right way. Okay, thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be able to share. <laughs> And let me see, okay. A lot of people also ask me this question. When do I not have a contact lens issue? Okay, so as straightforward as the question may be, sometimes we are just not so sure. So um, like I mentioned, especially nowadays when we are recommended to stay at home more, if you are having any issue with contact lens, you may be hesitating. Should I go in and find an optometrist? Is it good enough to give them a call? So if you have any discomfort or any vision changes with your contact lens, what you should do is stop wearing, okay, give us a call and we will be able to schedule an appointment. So sometimes um, we will recommend you to come in. It's because we need to assess the condition of your eye as well as the condition of your contact lens. We may be able to provide some general advice over the phone or via our teleoptometry video consultation. So this will depend on the severity of your symptom and also what kind or what level of discomfort you are feeling. So if you have any of the symptoms that I mentioned below, okay, remove your contact lens, get in touch with your optometrist, your opticians, your ophthalmologist before continuing lens wear. Okay, so one is if you have irritated or red eyes. Any irritated or red eyes, discontinue your contact lens wear immediately. If you have any pain that seems to worsen or it's just around the eyes, okay, if you feel you are very sensitive to light, okay, for example, um, the glare, um, you feel extra silau, you just don't feel so good, what you can do is you know, discontinue your contact lens wear first. Let's get your eyes checked out. If you have sudden vision changes, like you suddenly have very blurred vision, unusually watery eyes, so if your eyes are tearing a lot more, if you have any discharge, it can be like yellowish, it can be clear, it can be thick, it can be watery discharge. If you have any of this, discontinue your contact lens wear first. Okay, I think we have another question, so from Jasmine. What it means by power plus or minus? Okay, plus or minus, right? It's an indicator of whether you have long sighted or short sighted. So if you are looking at your prescription and in the SPH or sphere section, it says a plus, that means you are long sighted. If you see a minus, it means you are short sighted. So short sighted, which means you can't see far. Okay, it's what we call jing si in Mandarin. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. I think maybe we should do a second round of giveaway. Let me see. Okay, so this is the next question that I'm going to ask. But before you answer, you know what to do. Uh, you must first like, share the Facebook post. And when you are typing your answer, you must tag three friends in the um, answer line itself. Okay. So this is something that is very easy to answer. Okay, just share with me if you are a contact lens user. What brand of contact lens solution do you use? Okay, so remember, just share with me and we'll actually pick two lucky winners who, were, who is participating in this sharing. Okay, all you need to do is just tell me, share with me what brand of contact lens solution you are using and tag three friends. Okay, so while waiting for your answers to come in, let's address some of the other questions that we have. Hmm, there is one question that I really want to talk about is actually 
um, how to choose a good contact lens solutions. Okay, so this is something that you know a lot of people always ask. There are so many brands in the market, um, especially after I did uh, the previous session on eye drops. So I actually uh, introduced eye drops that can be used with and without contact lens for contact lens and non-contact lens users. So I actually got this request uh, whether I can do another session on contact lens solution. So before we actually do that session, I would like to address um, some key points. Okay, generally for contact lens solutions, right, um, there are three types of solutions get, that can be easily confusing for some people. So number one, you have what we call the saline. Okay, saline, if you go to the pharmacy, right, sometimes it's sold in like a pack of three. Okay, and it's very clearly stated that that is saline. So saline, when you are a contact lens user, you can use it to rinse your contact lens. But it, it's just good for rinsing, which means if there is any surface dirt or if there's any surface debris, it can rinse off. But it doesn't do a disinfecting or a re wetting function that well. Then you will have what we call the multi-purpose solution. So multi-purpose solution is something that's very commonly seen. So uh, this is the most popular choice. So normally you can see uh, those contact lens solutions, they will come sometimes a twin pack, a single pack with a smaller bottle of a trial or a travel pack. And the last one that I want to talk to you is what we call a hydrogen peroxide system. Okay. So the main difference between these two soaking and cleaning solution is for hydrogen peroxide, it very effectively disinfects contact lenses if you use properly but it will require a little bit more effort to use. So if you want to do lens infection with this hydrogen peroxide system, it can be either a one step or two step. So both this will require neutralization of the hydrogen peroxide solution prior to wearing the lenses. So example of this type of hydrogen peroxide system is for example, AOSET plus or OxySET. Okay, so these solutions are, you know, um, can be found in um, Malaysia. Okay, so these two are what we call a hydrogen peroxide system. So the casing that it comes with is very unique. It is not the normal flat contact lens casing that you see that comes with multi-purpose solution. So please remember if you're using a hydrogen peroxide system, please read and follow the instructions on the label. And for multi-purpose, like I mentioned, that is the most popular option that most people are using. I know sometimes that, you know, on the box, on the label, it says no rub or rub-free formula. But I would just like to take this chance to remind everybody, it is very important that you clean and rub your lenses. Okay, the reason why I'm recommending this is because in our tears, there are what we call protein. Okay, so this protein and some other uh, build-up can cause deposit on the surface of your contact lens. If our contact lens wearer, especially if you're wearing monthly contact lens, uh, maybe sometime towards the second or third week of wearing that pair of contact lens, you can hold up your contact lens against a light source. If you see there are a lot of white spots that cannot be rinsed away with your solution, it could be a deposit that is actually on the surface of the lenses. Okay, so, the way to minimize these depo this deposits are very simple. So one thing you should do is every time, every day when you remove your contact lens, okay, it's very important that you put your contact lens in your palm, facing up, put a few drops of solution, make sure you are rubbing your contact lens in an upward motion. Okay, a lot of people, they do in round circular. So when you do round circular, you just imagine if there's any deposit, right, it is still contained inside that bowl. The only way to get it out is upwards. So this is the motion that you should do to clean your contact lenses in the right way. So by rubbing this, right, um, when you rub, uh, make sure you're using your finger pad instead of your fingernail so you don't tear the contact lens. So when you're using the finger pad to rub this contact lens, what you are doing is you are mechanically breaking up this deposit. And when you rinse after this rubbing effect and store inside the casing, this can minimize any deposits from sticking to the contact lens. And of course, the lifespan of your contact lens could be longer. And some people also ask, 
what will happen if there are too many deposits or too much deposits on my contact lens? For those with sensitive eyes, this can cause some allergic reaction. So sometimes you may feel it's not so comfortable. I always get red eyes towards the last week uh, of me wearing these lenses. This could be a sign of deposit. So if you are very prone to having deposit and you already tried to use uh, rubbing and a good solution and you are still having issues with deposits, what you can do is actually go for something that has a shorter replacement schedule. So if you are using monthly, you can consider a two-week disposable or even daily disposable. Because daily disposable will have the least chance for this deposit build up. Because after wearing for a day, you are going to discard and open another fresh pair the next day. Okay, let me see. Wow, I see a lot of questions coming in. Sorry, I see a lot of answers coming in. Okay, so I think I have the winners already. Okay, so the next two winners giving away two units. Eh? Okay, two units of this Xiaomi power bank. Eh? This is a very good power bank that personally I love. Okay, so the first winner is Nor Juliana. And the second winner will be Yu Kyung. Okay, so congratulations, Yu Kyung and No Juliana. All you need to do is just message our Facebook page and our admin will actually get in contact with you on the price redemption. Okay, so thank you very much for your participation. I hope you really enjoy using this. Mm, I think we are coming to the end of the session today. So just let me quickly check in the comment section. Are there any questions that I've missed out? Yeah, I don't think so. So thank you very much once again, you know, for you know your continuous support in our Focus Point Facebook Live. Like I mentioned just now, sometimes it almost feels like um, I somehow I'm talking to my friends because of your continuous support, and that is something I'm very grateful for. So today we actually discuss about you know some of the commonly asked questions about contact lens wear, about contact lens replenishment. So I would like to stress once again that, you know, contact lens, it's um, not something that you should just buy and try and error. So in order to get a optimum fit, in order to take care of your eyes, health and also your vision, it is always recommended that you visit a licensed eye care practitioner to get uh, recommendations when you're a first time wearer. Or if you are an experienced contact lens user and you are thinking about changing brand, it is best that you seek your professional consultation first. Because other than power, we do take in other points to consider when we are prescribing a certain product to you. So if you are wondering how to replenish your contact lens supply during this time, what you can do is you can either contact any of the focus point that is nearest to you. We will be able to help with consultation over the phone uh, or over a video call and we'll be able to also accept your order and arrange for a doorstep delivery. Second alternative is visit our website at www.focus-point.com. You'll also be able to replenish some of your contact lenses via our e-commerce website. So once again, thank you very much for watching and I hope that I can see you soon in the next session of Focus Point Facebook Live. Don't forget to also like and follow our Focus Point Facebook page for more updates. So until then, take care and bye-bye.